friends this is akshay welcome to technologic today we will cover the spark session in this big data interview question series if you have missed the previous part of this series please check the playlist if you do not want to miss the upcoming lessons in this series please subscribe my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon today we will mostly talk about the data persistence in spark let's start and please watch till the end so the question you may face in interview like what is the difference between persistence and caching in the spark rdd and then some variation of it how can you know that your data is cached or not and then what is the storage level of the persistence what is the storage level of cache these all weird question and how can you validate whether whatever you have applied as a, for the data persistence is it uh, visible or not so we will take it with an example and show you all detail so when you talk about the data persistence in spark you need to remember two things first all the transformation like when you do any operations on the rdd so that is mostly two kinds one is transformation another is the action where you get the final outcome so all the transformation are lazily evaluated that means until and unless the action is called the transformation will not be evaluated and the data is not calculated so when any action is called like count uh, so then you have all the rdds in the entire transformation from the starting rdd to the final rdd will be recomputed as it is lazily evaluated so if you have multiple action item based on your single rdd and if you don't want to recompute every time you want to call that action the base rdd where from you are calling these multiple actions you can persist it so persistence can be of two kind one is like you can persist the data with the storage level defined another is like this is a short end like simply what is the difference between persistence and cache the cache is the short end of the persistence where only default storage level is taken you cannot specify any storage level in cache it will take only the default storage level that is memory only but in the persistence mode you can specify which persistence mode or which memory storage level you can opt for so that will be serialized or unserialized and then memory only or a combination of memory and disk and disk only as well and if you see somewhere memory memory only 2 or memory and disk underscore 2 or disk only underscore 2 so that is nothing but you are doing the same operation as memory only or disk only or memory and disk but with two cluster nodes and in python the data is always serialized with the pickle library so you don't have to choose the serialization level and it does not matter second thing if you don't mention the persistence then also spark automatically persist the data before the at the time of shuffle operation that is if you called 
reduce by key then at the time of shuffle operation the data is always persisted but if you want to reuse the persisted data you need to you can call the persistence explicitly so now let's go to my data bricks and let's check this with an example in entire detail before going there the last point why persistence is needed the persistence is needed to get a faster action like you can get almost 10x faster than what you get when you recompute every RDD transformation again let's check I will go with a very small data set let's open the notebook and first thing I will check is there any file available so I will call dbutils file system ls and you can give the sample file system like data bricks data sets sample docs and you just check yeah there is a file so then let me read the file I will read it as text file spark is the session spark session name we will use dot text and then we'll have the readme.txt so copy it from here and paste it and then better to write it readme. MD and I will just read the file first thing I will take a count without persistence like text file dot count and I will check what is my result yeah so there is 65 lines and let's persist the data like text file simple thing first cache and I will just check yeah now if you want to check text file dot storage level you see the storage level is now true now I will run this and check the storage again go back to storage yeah you see 
for case number 113 the size in memory is 3.6 kb so entire thing shifted into the memory as we applied the cache let's see if any improvement in the job run it's still the same you can see let's check the persistence now so first you need to unpersist it will not automatically change the persistent storage level then again you need to write and then you can specify the storage level I will specify disk only yeah and then again if I just take the count and check the memory so I've got task number 30 and just go to the storage and you see that now it is shifted from the memory to the disk and again you can do unpersist and you can check the storage level it will be false again thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe for more videos like this we will continue this interview question series with more spark questions and including hive scope as well thank you so much